Uh, Prakash, I just had a very wild thought. Uh, you know, we discussed how some bosses were mean to me and I went home crying after work many days. I just want to, you know, think about my boss for a second in that moment, uh, in that organization, in that role. Is a boss also dealing with similar feelings when they are also overwhelmed? Maybe they also are having bad days at work and going home crying. They're frustrated maybe with people who are uh, their, uh, their colleagues or maybe their subordinates. Um, and they somehow feel like being a boss is really a thankless job. Um, do you think from that perspective? We are very quick to say, I went home and cried. And we don't pause to think, maybe I'm my boss. You know, maybe I did something which made my boss go home and cry. And I don't think any of us ever pauses to think. And even if that happens, we say, well done. You don't deserve to cry. I think we're all human. Yeah? We all have our challenges. We all have our problems, our tensions. And, you know, it's, it's fair to, to say that even for most of us, and if young recruit into an organization and you have a leader or a boss, that boss also has a boss. Right. So they are no different. They probably have the same challenges. They probably sit and gossip about their boss with their colleagues. They probably have their same sense of frustration. So I think it's, it's there. It's very much there. But I just want to make a point here that it's not as if a boss needs to say being a boss is a thankless job. I don't think boss, a good leader would think of it that way. Uh, I think being a leader, being a boss is a privilege. Uh, it's, it's something that you should feel very good about because you have a chance to make a bigger impact on other people. You stop or you move from being an individual contributor to being someone who can make a team contribute. And I think once you get that bit right, there's magic in it. Now, there will be good days, there'll be bad days, there'll be times when you'll feel like crying, there'll be days when you'll feel frustrated. But here's what I feel, that good leaders will, not, will typically not want to blame their tears on someone else, won't really want to blame their frustration on, you know, oh my goodness, that employee is making me feel bad. I think a good leader will say, hang on, why am I not getting it right with her? What do I need to do differently to get it right with her? We are all built differently and what might work with one particular subordinate may not work with another. And a good leader will recognize that and, and try and do it differently. Uh, but you know, you talked about uh, the human side of, of each uh, boss. Do you feel like there are bosses that genuinely want to make that effort to get to know their team and their team to like them. Or are these efforts, you know, half-hearted with a mission, a secret mission behind them of uh, getting the subordinates to love them? I've always believed that um, your subordinates are usually way smarter than you are. Okay? I think it's a good rule to, to have in your life because they're younger, they're more with it, they're far more forthcoming, better informed. So if you do something half-hearted or if you don't really mean what you say, people see through it very easily to say, oh, I'm a leader. I must be liked by my people. I think your remit is to say, I must do a good job. I must help my team to do well. I must push and challenge my team to deliver a level of performance, which even they would not have believed was possible. And I must do it in a manner which is good for them, good for the business. Your objective has got to be to say, how do I do my job well? How do I help them to do their jobs well? How do I help them to deliver great results? And if you can do that, you will typically find that you're getting it right. Sometimes there may just be a boss figure who thinks that, okay, I'm doing all that I can for my team. I'm making all these efforts and I'm trying to be a good leader, but I'm not appreciated as much as my fellow uh, colleague. And in that situation, I want to ask you, uh, would that boss be thinking, is is being a boss a thankless job, is it? Yeah, I think, uh, to be fair, uh, a little bit of rivalry will exist everywhere. It's only when it starts becoming a bit of a negative energy or you trying to bring the other person down and, you know, all of that can become bad for everybody. I think it, it can happen to all of us as human beings. But I, I would still come back to the fact that so long as this rivalry makes you want to do something better, it's a good thing. Very often you will find, you know, I, I'll say this about myself. I would have had the chance to work with other people who were, you know, who were great leaders. And sometimes they might be appreciative of something they've done, which is very good. So you also say, hey, let me also try and do it. The key here is to be authentic, to be yourself. Because if you try and be like some other leader, you'll get it wrong. Because you are who you are. You can never be like this other person. 
what often happens to us is we tend to brand people we tend to box our bosses as ye to aisa hai ya she is always doing this or he is always doing that okay don't fall into that trap i think we all want to get better we all want change we all want feedback so what will happen sometimes is that a boss will act on feedback and will try and make a change and if as an employee or a subordinate you pick that up encourage that change you should be saying i'm delighted yeah that this person is trying to make that change rather than saying oh yeah you know that was only once and suddenly you are also helping the other person make that change and i think we all can help each other get better that makes the whole organization the whole team get better